Six to one, go ahead. Control one to five six. We have no listing in our log. Are you in service? Science six ten four. Uh, we checked out six oh eight p.m. Control one to five six ten four. Unit five six in service on the night watch. This is Don Reed, a police recorder. And right now you're writing in Detective Unit five six. And that was Sergeant Ron Perkins just checking us in on the night watch. You're coming along with us tonight, and as you do, remember the people you hear are not actors. This is it. This is real. This is night watch. Night watch, the actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors... There is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch. Presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. And now we switch you to Detective Unit 5-6 on patrol somewhere in the field and to police recorder Don Reed. We're uh, southbound on Washington Boulevard, and just a moment ago, uh, we passed a car that uh, was going in the opposite direction. It was attempting to pick up a couple of young girls uh, waiting at a bus stop. As a matter of fact, we're going to flip a U-turn now. Check this out. Just waiting for a spot in the traffic. Uh, we've had a couple of serious cases here in the area involving men attempting to pick up women on the streets, so the police units in the area have been alerted. Uh, now, in just a couple of more moments... We should get a shot to make that U-turn. One, two, three more cars. There goes one, two, three. Now we can go. The clear shot, heading back. And uh, looking directly ahead, the two girls are uh, getting into the car. Sort of uh, looks like a pickup. Anyway, we'll pull up alongside and make sure that everything's okay. At the moment sort of slowed down now and caught in some more traffic here. Trying to keep an eye on that car ahead. One male occupant is raising up in the seat. Apparently, we've been uh, spotted for a police unit. Now they've, um, wait a minute, they've cut off their lights and they're swerving into a side street. In fact, uh, the fact that they turned their lights off and ducked down a side street indicates they probably have something to hide. There goes off our lights. Running in the dark. Now there. That could be their car off there on the left hand side. Has the same bright type of finish. Now there goes on our spotlight. Shining into the car. Two male occupants. One girl in the back seat. Let's have a look. Drivers getting out of the car. Police officers, fellow. How come you try to duck from us? Well, I didn't duck off when I spotted you. I ducked off the park here and talked for a little while. See a real it? quick turn like that, leaving that Well, up? I didn't see the... I mean, you know, I was halfway past the street. And you knew we were the police, though. Well, yeah, I knew you were the police when you first pulled up. I mean, I have nothing uh, to be uh, hide. How old are you? 17. 17. You didn't pick up for anything? Uh, was, yeah, about two, three years ago. For what? Crashing parties. And... What are the girls' names? I don't know. I don't remember their names. You want to draw the attentions of a police officer fast to do just what you did. Well, I wasn't trying to draw the intention, attentions of you. Let's not kid ourselves. Well, I mean, I didn't try and draw the intention, uh, attention. All right, what did you stop here for? I talked for a few minutes. Man, you got a lot to learn. A lot. Moving over to our radio unit for a moment. Uh, five six to one. Uh, do you have a juvenile unit uh, available? Control one to five six ten four. Do you want a juvenile unit to meet you? Uh, ten four. Location Denton, one block south of Jefferson. Control one to five six. Stand by 
Five two J, meet unit five six. Oh, we just put in a call for a juvenile unit to meet us. They'll be along in just a few moments. Let's uh, move over to the other car now and talk to the young girls picked up a few moments ago. Here they are, both young, pretty, nervous, crouched in the back seat. How old are you? Sixteen. How old are you? Sixteen. You know either one of the boys? No. You just get in the car with two strange boys? Have you ever been to the county morgue? Have you ever seen what happens to girls when they get picked up by strangers? No. You're taking an awful chance. Now, you both look like pretty nice girls. I'd hate to go down here and find you in a vacant lot. Where were you going? Home. And you let these fellows talk you into getting in the car? Yes. I think you're very foolish. Let's uh, talk to the second boy standing over here. Have you ever been arrested? No. Nothing at all? No. I'm going to record check. I'm not going to find anything, huh? Nothing. But I'm going to record check and find something, and you're going to jail. I ain't got no record. Damn, I'm just telling you. He's giving you a fair warning. Okay. Archie, you want to keep your eye on him? We're going to check the car out over to the car. The girl's still huddled in the back seat. Just a bit frightened at the moment. Oh, throwing the light around. There's an empty beer can. A couple of old coats. A pair of greasy gloves. Hey, check this. Hmm. Oh, Lead pipe about 18 inches long. Yeah. There it's it is. It's going in. Very conveniently placed right next to the driver's seat. Let's go talk to him. Yeah, I'm a pretty dangerous weapon. Well, what is it? You got me what it is. You carry it in a very handy position, right? This is what we consider a deadly weapon. Carrying of it, it's illegal. Well, I mean, Jesus, it's just a bar. I mean, That's I right, it's just a bar. You have no reason to carry it. It's nothing in no part of your That's car. Right. I don't have no reason to carry it, but I mean, right. I had all sorts of stuff in the trunk. This is what you had in the trunk, and this is what you had right alongside the driver's yeah, seat. an iron bar. Yeah. makes a heck of a good, deadly weapon. Two girls leaning out of the window. Eyes glued on this piece of pipe. You ever been hit over the head with an iron bar? No. It's a good, deadly weapon. Hurts. Whatever he wanted, if he didn't want to give it to him, well, he probably would have taken it by force. They're going to see if the uh, juvenile car is having trouble finding us. Right. Well, how do you girls feel about it now? Scared. <laughs> cold? No. Do you always shake when you're not cold? Yes. No, just when I'm scared. There's nothing to be scared of now. The uh, juvenile car just moved in here. Let's get over there. Jim, you want to take these fellows on in and uh, run a record check on them? They check out okay while I make some FI cards. And, uh, by the way, take this uh, pipe in with you. They won't need it anymore. Let's get in the car, fellas. That FI card, referred to means field interrogation card, it's held in file for reference in case the two subjects are not formally booked. Let's get back to our girls again. I suggest you girls get in the police car. We'll run you on home. Will you? Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Oh. The two very pretty youngsters are going to ride in the back seat with us. So next stop, home. Five minutes to get down here to the girl's house. Very convenient. It seems they live next door to each other. We're going on down a few doors beyond so their parents won't see them come home in a police car. Well, do you uh, young ladies think you've learned your lesson? You 
adventure in life, we won't do it again. Okay. All we want. Okay? Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. You learned your lesson. Yes, you know it. There's my lesson. I'm just going to keep saying that. All right. Bye, and thanks an awful lot. Okay. Good night. I bet that's one experience these kids won't forget. Well, I hope not. Control one to motors 22 and 24. No want on your suspect. Local for West LA. You got five six coming. Five six, go ahead. Control one to five six. Attention, Sergeant Perkins. We have a subject here in the detective bureau who claims his wife may be insane. Request 1019 for investigation. 10 4, we'll roll right in. You are listening to Night Watch and following the activities of Detective Unit 5-6 on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. And now we switch you back to police headquarters where the crew of Detective Unit 5-6 is conducting an investigation and police recorder, Don Reed. I also meant the General Hospital Police to have a permitted this. I did that two years ago. This is the and Detective says, Bureau. And across the desk, a man, early 40s, nervously chain-smoking cigarettes, claims his wife may be possibly mentally ill, threatening their children. Let's get the rest of the information. I don't, I'm not a violent man. I mean, I don't drink. She says I drink, I gamble, I have a gun, I have a knife. But I don't have these things. But we can't go on like this anymore, my wife and me. How old are your children? Uh, one will be four next month. One is two and eight months. And then a little baby, three and a half months old. I never heard a woman talk with a cheap tongue. You wouldn't, be, you won't believe me if you talk to her. She's a good looking girl. And then she can be the most dignified thing you have ever seen in your life. More dignified. I mean, I'm a nervous wreck. But I don't know what I'm coming to in the past two or three years. Now, I had two jobs. I would be out as much as possible. She says, well, your job is home here, helping me with the kids. So I gave one up and I helped her with the kids. And I washed diapers. So she says, well, you were just washing the diapers to show off to the neighbors that you were a good man. I have seven newspaper clippings where a woman her age have killed two or three children. Then it's too late to come and ask you for help. Now there is a chance to talk to people because some days he's going to do something violent. Maybe I aggravate her, I suppose. I'm an old slob that she called me a thousand times. And every time I give her the paycheck, she would go and buy one or two dollars worth of toys. If it wasn't for the kids, well, I would say to the devil with her. She says, if you don't do what I tell you, I'll drop this baby. She held it like this, but I don't mind telling you, I fell on my knees because I got... I, I, I says, tell me what you want. You want this money? What do you want? What is it you want? She says, don't you be like that to me. And then, then she put the baby down. And whenever she hits, she always holds the baby on the hand. Now, for the protection of the children is really the main thing that I came into. Are you in, still in love with your wife? Yes, I'm afraid I am. How old, how old is your wife? 30. 30. And I'm 44. In other words, uh, you are still uh, vitally interested in her welfare. Yes, I'm. Despite the yeah. arguments in the background. I wouldn't be happy otherwise. And you also are... Uh, I would never leave her without sending money because right. I wouldn't be happy with two dollars in my pocket if I didn't send one to her. I see. Do you think that your wife is mentally unbalanced? That is a question. That is mighty hard. I think she is at times. I said. Have you ever have you ever discussed that with her at all? Yes, it that she ever, says it's uh, me that's insane. Have you ever asked her if she would be willing to talk to a psychiatrist? I have. Doctor? What did she say? She says I should go. I says I will go. I'll go first. And however, nobody would know what she is like. I couldn't describe it to you. You wouldn't believe it. How how violent. How how I don't know. 
<clears throat> Let's recap it just a little bit yeah. so that uh, we know exactly what the story is. We're not interested in the past too much because it's a civil nature. Right. We're interested right now in uh, welfare the kids. welfare and safety of both you, your wife, and the children. Well, that's good. And uh, we want to be sure that nothing happens to well, any one of you. So uh, right now, uh, as I understand it, your problem is that uh, you had an argument with your wife tonight and you left the house in order to prevent any... Well, any she was in trouble. bed. She didn't get up. Right. She, get, she says, you're going to sleep somewhere else. I says, okay, I will. But anyway, what I'm driving at, you did leave. Yeah. And She now, said she would call the police. That's yeah. why I came here. Now, uh, I thought you, you, you thought it was best to come down and explain the situation to us because you, you feel that she's going to call us and possibly oh, yeah. complain against you. Yeah. See, if I could sit down and talk to her, but you can't do that either. I, she, she would not sit down. She well, said, here's what I thought we would do. Uh, we will uh, go down and talk to her. That's good. And uh, she will give you a different story. Uh, we'll we'll tell right. her story. Yeah. And uh, the part of the of the divorce or your yeah. living together, that is strictly between the two of you in a civil right. case. Yeah. Your own attorneys uh, will have to handle that part of it. Yeah. But as far as the children are concerned or the possibility of any violence, that's where we will step in and help in any way we can. Well, that's all right with me. So, uh, if it's agreeable to you, we'll, we'll go down and have a talk with her. Good. And then uh, we'll contact you a little later on and uh, we can tell you uh, what she had to say and we can see if we can't work it out to some type of satisfaction to all yeah. the concern. It's funny how things can change. In New York City, they have a needed money, and of course, they say money. It isn't always that the place up at home. I mean, well, but something should that be side of the story pretty much speaks for itself. Now we'll move out to our radio car and check into the home and get the wife's side of the picture. The gentleman will wait back here at the station for us. And oddly enough, there's no way to anticipate what type of reception we'll get. I've uh, seen some that should be violent and turned out to be nothing. And then there's others that should be nothing and turned out to be quite a hassle. Now, well, we'll know very shortly. Heading up the walk of the home. It's a small English-type cottage. Rose-covered fence along the side. This little dog following us. Keeping at a safe distance. He's making an awful lot of noise for a little fella. This is uh, Don Reed and Officer Ward. Oh. Hey, girl. How, How are, are you? you? Come in, will you? Modestly furnished. A tiny baby asleep on the divan. Problems and troubles you're having here with your husband. Oh, I have quite a lot. Uh, can you tell us what uh, what this is all about? We've talked to your husband, and now we'd like to talk to you. Well, frankly, we have always had trouble from the beginning of our marriage. And uh, as one child after another came along, there's been more troubles. I frankly say I've never met anybody quite so mean as he has been to me and to the children. Uh, we'd like to ask you a little bit about what happened. Uh, your husband came to the station, and I understand that you'd had an argument. We had a terrible argument. I, I'm busy all day, and I haven't had a good night's sleep for many months. He's been doing this for night after night, and he gets up and makes a noise, and we all left my children in the bedroom there, and just stamps around here, and because I get mad too. I admit that. I can't help it. I, I just got to get some sleep at night. I... Was there any violence? Did he strike you, or did you yes, strike him? Yes, he always him? Gets, gets hold of me, and he shakes his fist in front of my face, which frightens me. Did he ever I, actually strike you? Yes, he has struck me many times, but he hasn't lately, so... Have you struck him? Uh, no, I've thrown things. You've thrown things? Yes, I, I couldn't uh, get hold of him to strike him. He has hurled so many insults at me that I, I just don't care much more now, but uh, well, I do expect a little respect. Of course... As far as uh, your marriage is concerned, that is is a is a civil matter. Oh, the yes. The thing that I we're know. interested in is that neither uh, you get hurt, or your husband, or your children. And that's what I want. And uh, now he told us that when we came down to talk to you to ask you what you wanted, and he would he would be willing to go by. I that. want a fair deal, like any wife does. May I ask you a personal question that yes, I asked him? Certainly. Are you in love with your husband? Yes, I am. Well, now he said the same thing about you. Oh. Huh. Uh, so. Uh, 
maybe we've got something we can work on. That, well, it sounds that. ridiculous. I mean, there's always quarrels in the home, especially when there's a new baby. But I have three lovely children, and uh, my husband has no respect for me. And uh, without that, a marriage cannot live. I can't have respect for him because he treads all over me. And if I was a woman with money, I would, uh, he would treat me a lot differently. But uh, this business, if I, he doesn't like to give me any money at all for my own little personal needs. But still, this business of asking him for a dollar or so, it's just, it's just what it shouldn't be in a marriage. I've told him he should leave the, uh, he has a right to leave some money in the house at all times. And he doesn't agree on that. He says it's safe with me. Well, how about the children? Are they being affected by all this? I'd say the boy is, definitely. How old is the boy? He's nearly four. He's getting older and he realizes it. I'm with them all the time and uh, uh, any little toys they need or anything is out of the question. And of course, you realize children need some toys. We had help from Salvation Army and the veterans. At uh, Christmas time, we've always had charity. And that's another thing. My husband loves to take charity. The more he can take, the more he likes it. I don't agree on that. I say an emergency, yes. But for this business, if I have to buy him a little toy, if he gives me a couple of dollars, I like to buy him a little thing each. Then starts a big quarrel. So I, I, uh, I don't exactly know who could help us that way. I mean, if thousands of homes have that same well, trouble. Well, I think one of the first things, if, if uh, you're sincere in... Uh, trying to patch things up and, and make a workable... He says I'm marriage. useless. Well... Uh, I'm useless because I don't have any money and I don't have a job. A woman can only do her best on uncertain circumstances. Are you willing for us to help you work this out? Why? Well, I would be very grateful because for anybody husband, who could. Because I think your husband expressed the same, the same opinion and we thought possibly, although it's actually not a criminal matter other than possibly the children are being affected, uh, we certainly well, of are course they will, and right. the older they get, the more affected to it they get. They're sensitive to atmospheres. I mean, uh, uh, it's not just the idea of having, uh, you can ask me, there's probably thousands of women in this country, you ask, it's the idea of having a dollar in your pocket, whether you spend it or not. And nobody likes to walk around without anything in their pocket. Is your husband working now? Yes, he doesn't earn very much. He's worked at job after job, I think, because... Uh, for his age, he's in the 40s, it's, it's rather awkward if a man doesn't have a steady career. I mean, it's just he can't seem to get into a really good job. You're not working, are you? Uh, no, I would gladly go to work, but I don't intend to work to keep him. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, I'd like to uh, to go back and talk to your husband. In the meantime, yes, we're most anxious is that, that you don't get hurt and that he isn't no. hurt and that the children aren't hurt. No, well, but I think it's best if we welfare. keep on a, a state of, of a politeness of civility to each other. I can't stand it. I mean, it, uh, I and he can't. Okay. Nobody can stand constant uh, bickering. Would you want him to come back and, and uh, to the home tonight? I don't mind a bit. This is his home. He says nothing here is mine, but I say it, it equally belongs to both of us. Well, I'll tell you, we'll, uh, we'll go up and, and talk to your husband and explain what you told us and uh, see if we can't uh, smooth relations a little bit. And then uh, in the next few days, you care to I come on down yes. both of you and we'll talk the whole thing over. Well, that's very nice of you. This is an unexpected visit. I... Well, we're, we're anxious to help you if we possibly can. That's why we came down to see you. Well, that's awfully nice. It's just a point, if, if a man is going to look down on a woman, there's, there's no, there's nothing to work on there. Well, we'll see what we can do, maybe we yes, can do it. Yes, all right. Well, okay. it's nice to talk to you, gentlemen. Thank you. And uh, forgive me for not letting you in at once. Perfectly all right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, as I said before, there's two sides to every story. But I didn't realize how right I was. Let's get back to the station and see if we can get this squared away. Okay. We've uh, been back here to headquarters for better than an hour. And just a moment ago, we finished playing the recording of the wife's statements made in the house. The uh, husband sitting in front of me hung on to... Uh, Every word she said sort of ran the gamut of emotions, as it were. 
Let's see how he feels about the situation now. That's marvelous. I mean, uh, isn't it amazing? When I sit and listen to this statement, I, I wish I knew a way that I could be better. If it's all my fault, I want to learn. Well, now, can I give you some suggestions? Yeah, you sure can. You, uh, you heard the tape recording of your wife. Yeah. You told me uh, that you loved her. Right. You heard the tape recording and she said that she loved you. Now you've got three, three very nice children. Yeah. And that, that is, is one of the most important things to remember. Right. Now, uh, she has agreed to come in here and talk to the juvenile authorities. Good. And we would like to have both of you come in this week. And we can give you some recommendations as to who to see. Yeah. And possibly the fact that uh, you both love each other and you both are interested in your children, that this thing can work out. I think it can. Yeah. So, uh, shall I? Now, she, she okay. said that she would like to have you yeah. go home there tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you gentlemen has, ought to be blessed for that because you have given you time where you didn't have to give it, and I certainly appreciate its odd importance and you, Mr. Don Lee, because someday, I don't know if you'll ever get through anything like this, it really kills a man. What you have just heard is real. The investigation was recorded as it actually occurred. And now, back to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. Tonight's first case of the two boys picking up girls on the street resulted in their being brought into the station for questioning because of the deadly weapon found in their car. Both boys were cited into juvenile hearing and placed on probation for a period of six months. In the final case of the man who requested an investigation of his home conditions, after listening to the recorded statement of his wife, I am advised a reconciliation took place. In the normal conception of police work, to many, this case may seem unimportant. To this man, who had no one to turn to, this was a key moment in his life. However, this type of police work done by your law enforcement officers is seldom related or publicized in the newspapers, like the long hours of stakeouts that fail to materialize, the miles of legwork for a single clue. These are a few of the many problems seldom realized by the average citizen. To help bring about this understanding is the reason for Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following the on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch, brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hedlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by police recorder Don Reed. <laughs>